Hello, this is Eric DeCurbanel from MarketSkeptics.com. I now want to talk about how the Fed uh, expands the, the money supply using its balance sheet. It's uh, simplest of term. All the Fed does when it when it wants to increase the money supply is it buys assets. This would be the money that the Fed is paying, the Federal Reserve notes, that it's giving uh, banks and investors for these securities that it's buying. As an example of this, let's turn to the latest to a graph of the Fed's balance sheet, which looks like a horror story. And a point I want to highlight is the mortgage-backed securities that the Fed has begun to buy. A quick look at uh, the Fed's latest release also confirms this. Right there, mortgage-backed securities. Last month it has bought $68 billion, $69 billion worth of these mortgage-backed securities. So if the Fed wants to expand it, the money supply even more to fight deflation, all he has to do is keep on buying these mortgage-backed securities and putting them on the asset side of its balance sheet. And all the money it's paid for these wonderful mortgage-backed securities ends up expanding the monetary base. And so you add these assets. And okay, now it's time to talk about how the Fed shrinks the money supply. So let's say that after having bought these, let's say, 500 billion in mortgage-backed securities, suddenly investors overseas start doubting the dollar. And they start sending their dollars back to the U.S. money supply. And suddenly, uh, the Fed needs to shrink the, the U.S. money supply to prevent hyperinflation. Well, the way the Fed would do this is by selling assets. Now, if it tried to sell those mortgage-backed securities right here that it, ju that it just bought, it sells them, but it can maybe get one-fourth of what it paid for. And that highlights a very important point. While the amount of assets the Fed can buy and how much it can expand the money supply is unlimited, the same cannot be uh, said of shrinking the money supply. The most the Fed can shrink the money supply is by the market value of the assets on its balance sheet. And in the case of all these uh, mortgage-backed securities and other toxic assets it's collecting from banks, their uh, market value is much, much lower than what the Fed says on its balance sheet. It, it might be lucky to get half. And as for treasuries, all the Fed has left is about $270 billion in treasuries. So if the Fed gets desperate and absolutely has to uh, shrink the money supply, and it sells off all its assets, all these, all it gets for these, this amount of assets on its balance sheet is market value, which is four squares in this case. And at that point, it can do nothing about the money supply. So what happens uh, when the Fed runs out of assets? Well, the, you have to remember that the currency of the United States is backed by the full faith and credit of the government of, of the United States, which means that if the Fed experiences market losses and needs to be recapitalized, the, Fed, the Treasury will send over a new batch of Treasuries, increasing the national debt, of course. So if the Fed sold off everything on its asset side of its balance sheet, it'd probably have a $500 billion uh, loss, and the Treasury would then be required to send over $500 billion worth of security of Treasuries, increasing national debt by half a trillion. Which highlights another fun point uh, that all these Bear Stern Rescue and 
other uh, government bailouts by the Fed haven't been cost costless experiences. Here's a good chart showing this. Now, if you uh, in back in 2005, the Fed's balance sheet was nearly entirely AAA rated treasuries. Now the Fed's balance sheet is well, AIG bailout. The um, Bear Stearns bailout, which is Maiden Lane right here. Um, this uh, this one here. Oh, I forget. Well, in any case, all of these are, are the various bailouts you've heard about over the last year. These are swap lines uh, with foreign governments, uh, currency swaps. And theoretically, they should be uh, reversed if those governments stay solvent. Here you have all the various toxic assets for treasury programs that the Fed has running at any given time. A discount window is lending to desperate nearly failed banks. Another... I can't keep track of all these acronyms the Fed keeps using. This one here is just ridiculous. Repurchase repurchase agreements. This is the one uh, that you will actually find on the 2005 Fed balance sheet. The rest you won't. <laughs> Treasury's free and clear. My bad. 200, two bill, 290 billion left. And another acronym down here. Another program. What all this highlights is the assets on the Fed's balance sheet are its ammunition for controlling uh, inflation, for reducing the money supply. Now just think what do you think the market value of all these assets are? And it's obvious that it's going to be terrible. You won't, The Fed's ability to shrink the money supply is non-existent right now. 